Hi there, welcome to Noctis on YouTube. Historically, the concept behind the hovercraft principle was first introduced in 1716 by a Swedish scientist named Emanuel Swedenborg. However, the idea of the hovercraft only developed in the 1950s by Christopher Cockrell, whose research proved that high-speed boats are more efficient when air is trapped under the hull, reducing friction on the boat. At that time, Cockrell came up with a brilliant idea by introducing a powered lift system capable of fully lifting the boat's hull from the water. The drastic reduction in drag meant that very high speeds could be achieved by relatively small boats. Interestingly, this lifting system is not limited to water but can also be used for travel over land even over ice. Noting this impressive project, the National Research and Development Council then provided funding to build a full-size working model, which they eventually called the Hovercraft. The first Hovercraft, named SRN-1, was built in Cow's Isle of Wight. SRN-1 was built as a subject for experimentation, demonstration, and further development. As a result, SRN-1 successfully crossed the English Channel on the 50th anniversary of the first cross-channel flight. However, this vessel was still difficult to control, especially on land and in rough sea conditions. Learning from this experience, Cockrell took the initiative to add a flexible skirt to the hovercraft. The skirt referred here is not a garment usually worn by women, but a buoyancy device that has the effect of trapping air under the hull. As a result, the hovercraft can naturally hover higher above the surface. Although the amount of lift or levitation varies from one vessel to another, hovercraft are generally capable of lifting at least more than 6 inches, and some designs can even lift more than 5 or 6 feet. So, how exactly does a hovercraft work to function according to procedure? Hovercraft use simple physics calculations of air difference or air pressure difference required to generate lift force against gravity. This system is designed in such a way that air at atmospheric pressure is easily drawn by force with the help of fans or blowers. The air drawn is directed downward towards an open cushion or flexible skirt underneath which temporarily captures or limits the volume of air drawn. However, this volume of air gradually disappears or escapes from under the skirt, but at a certain point, the air content trapped inside is much greater than the rate of injection. The inability of pressurized air to move freely due to the trap limits caused by the cushion or skirt surface, deck, and the surface of the water or ground itself dramatically increases the net pressure far greater than normal atmospheric pressure. It is this technique that creates the aerodynamic force or the entire vessel to lift slightly from the surface. The hovercraft cushion or skirt is usually made of rubber due to its superior properties and high durability. This skirt must be thick, sturdy, flexible, weather-resistant, and suitable for use in abrasive environments. 
However, modern hovercraft use advanced materials such as nylon, vinyl, and even complex composites of sturdy synthetic materials. The hovercraft skirt itself consists of two main designs or two operating theories namely open plenum and closed plenum or momentum curtain operation theory. Open plenum is a design created more straightforwardly where air is fully drawn without limit into the cushion or jacket with the help of fans or high flow rate suction mechanisms. As a result, some air is trapped inside, while the rest escapes from the bottom of the skirt. If the fan capacity is increased, the lift force will also increase slightly. However, at the same time, the amount of air escaping is also proportionally greater due to the high flow rate. Meanwhile, the closed plenum uses the physics theory of the momentum curtain, which is nothing but a skirt that has barriers or blocks inside. This allows air to be sucked at a controlled rate and significantly increases the flow pressure through the concrete path beside it. Moreover, because the airflow is controlled, the air escaping or the airflow rate when disappearing underneath is also relatively low. Based on the momentum curtain theory, air can be channeled around the entire edge of the cushion and allowed to flow like a typical curtain. Therefore, Based on the instantaneous air pressure generated due to these factors, the lift force on the closed plenum is considered greater than the open plenum. To keep it moving and floating, a suction fan or blower is needed that is capable of sucking air from the surrounding environment at a very high flow rate and directing it downward to inflate the cushion at the desired pressure. This lift fan or blower is located inside a shaft or duct where the air inlet is evenly distributed before moving towards the cushion. After suction, proper air distribution to the entire cushion is the most important thing. Although traditional dual fans are considered highly efficient for air suction, Modern fan designs are actually single and equipped with a much more sophisticated air suction system. In addition to strong suction fans and blades, the engine is also responsible for supplying the power needed to drive the propeller and lifting equipment. The engine has a main shaft connected to the lift fan and propeller through a clutch and reduction gearbox. The configuration and type of engine can vary depending on the needs and size of the vessel. After supplying the necessary power to the lift fan, the remaining power is redirected back to the intrinsic propulsion system to provide thrust. The net thrust generated depends on the engine capacity, size, and type of propeller. Modern designs no longer use propellers. Instead, modern hovercraft use sophisticated jet propellers like airplanes. This certainly allows the hovercraft to produce higher power. This vehicle, steered using a rudder similar to an airplane, is designed to carry up to several hundred people and comes in various sizes and capacities. However, among all the hovercraft in the world, the Zuber class hovercraft from Russia still holds the record as the largest hovercraft in the world. 
Possibly this Zuber class hovercraft is the only type of armed hovercraft in the world. In Russian, Zuber means European bison. This Zuber class hovercraft was built with an overall length of 187 feet, a width of 84 feet, and a draft of 5.2 feet. There are two hovercraft in the Zuber class, namely Evgeny Koyeshkov and Mordovia, which were built in 1991 in St. Petersburg. The ship, designed to carry a large number of marines in short-range amphibious assaults, has a weight of 415 tons with a normal load that can accommodate 33 crew members. In addition, the ship is also equipped with various types of weapons, ranging from 10 BTR-82A APCs, 3 main battle tanks, 2 stable rocket launchers, four IGLA-1M portable air defense missile systems, and two AK-630 30mm automatic guns. The AK-630 artillery system provides defense against manned and unmanned air attacks, including anti-ship missiles, sea targets, light shore targets, and floating mines. Each ship also has two 22-round 140mm rocket launchers Ogon to suppress coastal defenses. Each Zubir class ship is powered by five gas turbine engines capable of producing 12,000 shaft horsepower. Three of the gas turbines are mounted on a large mast at the stern of the ship that drives horizontal thrust while the other two drive blowers to maintain pressure at the edges of the ship to keep the hovercraft floating on the trapped air layer. This allows the ship to travel up to 300 miles at a sustained speed of 55 knots or 63 miles per hour. Although the Zuber class hovercraft looks unique and sturdy, it is likely that the ship will not last long. According to circulating information, the ship first shipped in 1991 was intended to last only 16 years. In addition to Russia, China and Greece also operate four Zuber class hovercraft. China's Zubir class ships are specifically used to defend and strengthen the country's islands in the South China Sea or seas islands in the East China Sea and could lead an invasion of Taiwan. Meanwhile, Greek hovercraft are useful for operating among the hundreds of islands in the Aegean Sea, particularly as a means of maintaining the balance of Turkish military power.